In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Come, Holy Ghost, fill hearts thy faith, and kindle them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created. And they shall be in the face of thee. Let us pray, O God, as instruct the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Ghost. Grant that the light of the same spirit we always truly wise and rejoice in his consolation through the same Christ, O Lord. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, 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 Okay, so we look at the resurrection. How long was our Lord in the grave? Three days. Three days, yes. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Those are the three days. So, by our count, Zachary. Father, um, did I, but I very early in the morning. Very early. Oh, that's right. Yes. Yes, very early in the morning resurrected. So we say he was in the in, in the tomb three days. You can see that if, if, if I was going to ask you how long is it until Friday, how many days would you say? Days? Three days, because you would say Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and today is Tuesday. See, but that's not the way the Jews did it. See, the Jews counted, okay, they would say, well, today is Tuesday, tomorrow is Wednesday, next day is Thursday, next day is four days, see? So that's how they count the three days. They count the Friday, and then the Saturday and the Sunday, he was in the grave three days. They count the first day. See, they, count, they counted their days differently than our days, than we do. So they counted things differently. So we changed the counting sometime in the course of history. We changed the way to do that. And see, for them, the Sabbath started at sundown on Friday. That's why they had to hurry up and bury our Lord and get back into town, get back into Jerusalem before they closed the gates for the Sabbath. Okay. When did Christ ascend into heaven? Forty days after his resurrection. Yes, Christ ascended body and soul into heaven forty days after his resurrection. That's right, it was a Thursday on Ascension Thursday. Very good, yes. Do you know where he ascended from? Heaven. Now, where are you from? Not where to. He ascended to heaven, Darcy. Hell? No, he didn't ascend from hell. No. Rainbow? No. Wow, is it from where he spoke to the apostles? Yeah, he spoke to the apostles in a lot of places, all over. I mean, like, uh, when before he was going to, uh, well, in a little shelter. He left from earth? Left what? Earth? From earth. Yes, he left from earth. He ascended from earth into heaven. Mount Tabor? No, not Mount Tabor, but you're getting closer now. Mount Olivet. From the Mount of Olives. That's where he ascended into heaven from, the Mount of Olives. We'll see that probably. But it was, um, it was outside Jerusalem. So, 40 days. Why did Christ remain on earth 40 days after his resurrection? Anybody know? Zachary? To teach? To teach, yes. To prove that he was really resurrected? To prove he really resurrected, yes. So if he just resurrected on Sunday and ascended to, into heaven on Monday, people would say, well, who saw him? We don't know. St. Mary Magdalene saw him, but we don't believe her. No, so he stayed 40 days to prove that he had truly risen and to teach the apostles, to complete their instructions. Father, you know how when our Lord resurrected, you know how some of the other people resurrected? Yes. Did they stay 40 days too? Oh, they must have. Yeah, they must have, yes. Uh, 
That, I don't know for sure. Well, but I would say it must have, yes. So he remained on earth 40 days after his resurrection to prove that he had truly risen from the dead and to complete the instructions of the apostles. What sacrament did he institute after the resurrection? Do any of you know? Penance. Penance. Yes, it was after the resurrection in the upper room. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive. They are forgiven, whose sins you shall retain. They are retained. So, see, after the resurrection, the grace was there to forgive sins. So that's when he instituted the sacrament of penance. What's that confirmation? No, that was penance. Forgiving sins is penance. You don't forgive sins with confirmation. You're supposed to go to confession before you go get confirmation. <coughs> when was confirmation instituted? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't know for sure. But the first one was on Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came on the apostles. They were the first ones to be confirmed. But when, the, when our Lord instituted the sacrament, we don't know for sure. Uh, just like uh, we don't know when he instituted the sacrament of extreme unction. It was St. James that told us about it. So St. James promulgated that sacrament. They call it promulgated, which means spread it around and let people know about it. Zachary. When did he institute Holy Eucharist? At the Last Supper. And our Lord said, do this in memory of me. He had just said Mass, and he said, do it in memory. He gave them the power to say Mass. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he couldn't. He wouldn't say do it if he didn't give them the power to do it. He made them, made them priests as well. Yes, bishops. Okay. So to prove, to prove his resurrection. So St. Paul tells us that after his resurrection, he appeared frequently to the apostles and to many others. You know how many were with him on Mount Olivet when he ascended into heaven? 500. About 500, yes. 500 souls watched him going up into heaven. So he, he only appeared to his friends. So he didn't appear to Pontius Pilate or Caiaphas or uh, the Pharisees or the, the, the scribes. He only appeared to those who uh, were loving him and his disciples. Why didn't they believe in him? Because they didn't believe in him. They had their chance. So uh, they have to now believe in the apostles. When the apostles preach him, they have to believe the apostles that say, yes, we saw him rise from the dead. We saw him alive. Like we have to believe that. So we have to believe this part we hear from the apostles. Yeah. Book of Acts, we read, To them also he showed himself alive after his passion by many proofs during 40 days, appearing to them and speaking of the kingdom of God. So giving them instructions and telling them. Okay. What do we mean when we say that? So he ascended into heaven, body and soul, and they were all watching him. As you would, if you saw somebody ascend to heaven. You'd be watching him, so they were all watching him. And what did the angel come and say? Is that about Benny? Um, why do you look into heaven? Oh, so they should have said, well, we're hoping to get another glimpse of, glimpse of Jesus. He just ascended into heaven. So he, he disappeared in a cloud. And they were watching, hoping to see if he'd come out on the other side of the cloud or something like that, but he didn't. So that's when he ascended into heaven. Uh, they were standing there watching him. The angel said, get to work. So why are you standing there looking up to heaven? What do we mean when we say that Christ sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty? When we say that Christ sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, we mean that our Lord as God is equal to the Father, and that as man he shares above all the saints in the glory of his Father, and exercises for all eternity the supreme authority of a king over all creatures. So the right hand is the sign of dignity, a dignified sign. So he sits at the right hand of the Father. Does the Father have hands? No. 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 Yeah. Yes? No? Yeah. Why does he have hands? Pardon? Yeah, but our Lord's not the Father, is he? Does the Father have hands? No. 
No, why not? Um, because we think it's thinking. He's a spirit. Not that he can think, it's spirits don't have bodies. So he doesn't have a hand. So the right hand there is symbolic. The right hand is the position of authority, the position of dignity. The, the highest place after the king is the right hand of the king. Who holds the earth in their hands? The infinite pride. The infinite pride. Right there. So he's got his left hand. So he holds the earth in his hand. Yes. So the earth, it's uh, the, the God has authority over all things. So, since at the right hand of God the Father, we mean our Lord as God is equal to the Father. So our Lord does sit on a throne, because he's got a body. He ascended body and soul into heaven. So he's on a great throne as the, uh, the king uh, of, of heaven, as well as of earth. He born as conquering, conquering, he conquered to be king. And as man he shares, so as, as God is equal to the Father, as man he shares above all the saints in the glory of his Father, and exercises for all eternity the supreme authority of a king over all creatures. So he has the authority, he governs the creatures. So it's our Lord that is the king. And it's based on the hypostatic union and on the redemption. So the hypostatic union, what's the hypostatic union? Um, it means hypomania. No, what, what is the hypostatic union? No? You should know that. Benny, what's the hypostatic union? Don't you don't know, we had it about two, two weeks ago. Um, uh, Angela, what's the hypostatic union? Um, All right, it's a union. What does a union mean? One. Make one. All right, so what's a union of? No, it's not standing. All right, what do we know that is, that is united? What things are united? God. No, God is one. Body and soul. Yes, but that's not the hypostatic union. Three persons in one God. No, 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 you're just guessing. It's the union of the human nature with the divine nature. Where does that union take place? In our Lord. Not in our Lord specifically, no. Specifically, where is the union? We've had this. Angela. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Cross? No, cross. Love, love. All right, so we got, we got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, right? Three persons. What do we call that? The Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity. Very good. Three persons. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Holy Trinity. And the Son has divine nature, doesn't he? Yes. And what did he do? He added, he, he, he took on human nature. So now, the human nature and the divine nature are united. Where are they united at? Where is the human nature united with the divine nature? Oh, no, not when. Where? Where, not when. Where are these two natures united? No, not in Our Lady. Our Lady only has one nature. She only has human nature. Incarnation? Pardon me? Incarnation? Yes, but wait, that's, that's a, what do you mean by incarnation? That means, what does that mean, incarnation? That's not where the, that's not where the natures are united in the incarnation. In the womb of Our Lady? No. Oh, we've had this. In the person of the Son. In the Son, in the person of the Word. The Word became flesh. 
So in the person, so Jesus is the person of the word of God, has divine nature, and he took to himself human nature. So the union is in the person. That's called the hypostatic union. Hypostatic union, we had this the other day. is equal to the union, that means making one, of divine nature plus human nature in the person of the word. So the union takes place in the person of the word. What's the word's other name? No. What? They confess of the Holy Trinity. Yes. So what's his name? Son of God. The Son, yes. His other name is the Son. So the Word or the Son. So the, the person is the Word. It takes place in the person. The union of the hypostatic union. So why are we talking about the hypostatic union this week? We already covered that a couple weeks ago. Nobody remembered it. Hmm. So it's a union of two natures, two natures united in one person. And that's what makes it possible for our Lord to redeem us. That's why with the redemption. That's if he wasn't two natures, he couldn't redeem us. Not in the way he did it anyway. He'd have to find a different way. So that's why he's king. So our Lord, that's why we're looking at this. So he's king one because of the hypostatic union, because he is God. So Jesus is king because of the hypostatic union. Which means he is God. Why else is he king? We know that because he made us. How do you get to be a king? How did William get to be king of England? Does anybody know how William, the Norman, became king of England? Conquered. He conquered it. Yes, that's another way you can become king by conquest. He's the conqueror. So he's king by conquest. He conquered it. That's how William became, we call him William the Conqueror. That's why I gave you that name, that's a clue. So he conquered England. And he became king of England. And now, uh, our Lord, he conquered by dying on the cross and raising up himself on the cross. He conquered over the enemies of the human race. And so he, by conquest, he is uh, the king. So by his precious blood that he redeemed us, he bought us back. So he bought the right to be our king. So he earned it. So he earned the kingdom as well as inheriting the kingdom. So he inherited the kingdom as a son, he inherited the kingdom. And he's a king because he's born king. But he's also king by conquest. So he's got two, two titles, two, two ways to exercise that title of king. And our Lord's kingship doesn't extend, it, it extends also for over everything, see? So he needs to be king in society. This is where, in the world, he needs to be king. So the Catholic nations sometimes proclaim that Christ was their king, and that would be correct. He should be king everywhere. Pilate therefore said to him, Then art thou a king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest it, I am a king. This is why I was born and why I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. So our Lord claimed to be king. So he is king. <coughs> so he sits at the right hand of the Father. So he's in heaven in his human body, sitting in the throne at the right hand of the Father. And who sits next to him? Our lady. Our lady in another throne. Yes, this queen. She's the queen of heaven. So she was crowned king, queen of heaven, probably by our Lord himself. He probably put the crown on her head and made her queen. So that's what we 
celebrate that's the fifth glorious mystery of the rosary, the coronation of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Queen of Heaven. So he stayed in the earth 40 days, doing many uh, instructions, seeing many people, and uh, demonstrating to them that he had indeed risen from the dead. Prove that, and then he ascended to heaven. Did the apostles want him to go to heaven? No. No, they wanted him to stay. But he said, I have to go. I have to go. I'm going to send you another paraclete. But if I don't go, he won't come because I won't be there to send him. What do we mean when we say that Christ will come from thence to judge the living and the dead? Zachary. At the end of the world, he will come to judge the people in heaven, hell, on earth. That's correct, yes. So at the last day, that's going to be the last day, the end of time. The last day of time, our Lord is going to come. So everybody's going to die. It's appointed the man wants to die. Why do you have to die? Why can't you live forever? Because once you fulfill what God asks you to do, you have to get your own reward. Why do we have to die? We've had this. Because I need to commit the original sin. Very good. Yes, because of original sin. It's appointed the man wants to die. When you eat that, if you disobey me, you eat the fruit of that tree, you're going to die to death. So we inherit death uh, from Adam and Eve. So we all have to die. So everybody will die. Uh, and maybe you'll die violently if you're alive at the end of the world. Maybe there'll be a big violent death of everybody. And there'll be nobody to bury it. The last person living is not going to have anybody to bury him. And then the, our Lord will come and there'll be the resurrection. So the resurrection has to be has to be before the judgment, before the general judgment. So the last day after everybody's dead, and they put all the fires out or whatever else is on earth, the angel will have to do that. Uh, put all the fires out, and then the trumpet's going to sound, and all the dead people are going to hear the trumpet. So there's going to be some trumpet. We're going to sound this trumpet, and all the dead are going to hear it. And they're going to rise out of the dead graves. Mm -hmm. They're going to come back. And their souls are going to come back from wherever their souls are and find their bodies. And they're going to be back living again. Mm -hmm. And then where are they going to go? To uh, the Valley of Josephat. To the Valley of Josephat for the judgment. And that's when there's going to be the separation. That's the final separation of the good from the evil. Yes? Sorry, does that mean nobody else is going to purgatory? No, purgatory would be closed down then. That's finished. Uh, so anybody who's in purgatory will go to heaven. So when you say closed down, does that mean it will be destroyed? It'll be destroyed? Uh, well, there would certainly be nobody there. There'll be no need of it anymore. But whether it'll be destroyed, it won't be. It won't be uh, annihilated. It might be changed into something else, but, uh, but there would no no purpose for purgatory anymore. What about the babies in limbo? Will they? They'll still be in limbo. Yes, they'll come to the judgment though. They'll, they'll rise again, but then they'll be sent back to limbo. So yes. Would the babies just cry because they are still babies, or will they have babies? Well, that now we don't know. We don't know whether they'll be just crying or sitting around gooey or whatever they do, you know? Well, we don't when, know. But when you say when everyone goes to the Valley of Joseph, they'll be at the age of 33? Yeah, that'll be, that's be the, well, the saints will be anyway, perfect age. Whether, whether Dan will be like that, I don't know. So, 
seem to be in here. The saints will be in all their vigor, their strength, of their they'll be in the best health. But uh, the sinners, well, we don't know about them now. Okay, so then after everybody gets there, they're going to bring the throne. Who's going to be the judge? Angela. Our Lord. Our Lord, yes. So they'll bring a big throne, the angels will, and our Lord will come in a big procession with lots of pomp, and then he'll sit in the throne, and he'll judge everybody. And he'll do it in his human nature. Judge him in his human nature. So if they do it in alphabetical order, you'll be near the end, Zachary. <laughs> and Angela will be first. One of the first. Right. Yes. Um, well, Wait a minute, Zachary's got a question. Uh, they might, we don't know what age they'll be, yes. But they're not going to go to heaven. They're not going to go to hell. So they're going to go back to limbo. If I went back to limbo, would I be back to diabetes? Well, that I don't know for sure. I don't know the answer to that question. Because the church hasn't even pronounced that limbo. Lim limbo is not a dogma of our faith. So if you doubt limbo, you can doubt limbo if you want. Do you, if you see, um, will you see our Lord when you get judged? Yes, in his human nature. And even again? Yes, that's why you won't see his divine nature, because to see his divine nature will be in heaven. He's going to judge us in his human nature. That's why he's going to have a throne to sit on. In his human nature, he's going to judge us. He's going to come back and judge the living and the dead. He's going to come back in glory as king with a crown. He's not going to come back poor. Uh, and like he came the first time, he's going to come back glorious. Yes? Father, um, do you see your angels? Do you see your guardian angel in your limbo? I don't think so. So you're just like an angel? Yeah, I don't know what your angel You don't need an angel in limbo, though. There's nothing to guard you from. No. In limbo, is it just... Um, is it like Earth, except it's just limbo? It's supposed to be a state of natural happiness. But a limbo is just a conclusion that the theologians have come up with. Because they said, they, the, 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 St. Augustine thought the babies went to hell. Because limbo hadn't been thought up yet. See, in St. Augustine's time, nobody had thought of limbo. So we thought they went to hell because of original sin. They had original sin, they couldn't go to heaven. They thought there were only two places, heaven and hell. And there are only two places. Because remember, what does limbo mean? Neither here nor there. Neither here nor there. Yes, you're not in heaven and you're not in hell. You're just in between somewhere. See? That's what it means. So uh, it's mysterious. And it's not a dogma of our faith. The church, church has never taught that. So. But it's a conclusion that the theologians have come up with. Because they said, well, for original sin, you have to die, but you don't necessarily go to hell for original sin, you go to hell for personal sins, for your own sins. But original sin separates you from God, you can't go to heaven. So they say, well, you can't go to heaven because of original sin, but you don't necessarily go to hell. So that's where they got the idea of limbo. It's not, it's not certain. Okay, so we don't know anything about limbo. It's not revealed to us. But it's not contrary to the faith. That's what the, the theologians had thought of. Okay. So that last day, he's going to pronounce a sentence on everyone who has ever lived in the world. So maybe it'll start off from the first one who died. Maybe it'll start with Abel. Go down to the last one living. I don't know how what order they're going to do it, but everybody's going to watch the judgments and see the judgment. Where everybody's going to see that we need the general judgment. Why? Do we, if everybody already knows where to go into heaven, hell, or purgatory, or heaven or hell, why do we need a general judgment? We need a general judgment, Zachary. That everyone's sins will be perfect? Everyone's sins will be perfect. Public. Public? Well, we don't need a judgment for that necessarily, do we? We don't need to make everybody's sins public. 
But no, it's so yes, because see, we're social creatures as well as uh, individuals. We were made for society, that's one reason. And so first of all, we need to see that justice is done. So like, let's pretend that Judas is in hell. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't. I'm not sure. But likely he is, right? Because our Lord said to him, better that he had not been born. So he's probably in hell. And now, maybe his mother's there. And she says, well, Lord, I don't think it was just for you to send Judas, my Judas, to hell. Right? So she's got to see that it was just. That Judas got sent to hell. And that's the same with everybody else. Their mothers or their fathers say, wait a minute now, my little boy, my little girl was very good, and they didn't, go after, they didn't have to go to hell. And so they're going to see, yes, it was just. And they're going to, everybody's going to see the great mercy God did to those who are condemned, that he's not punished them as much as they deserve. So they're going to get punished forever, but that's not as much as they deserve. Hell's a little cooler than it should be to be just, perfect justice. So we're going to see his mercy towards the sinners. And we'll also see his mercy towards the ones that are saved, how they got their sins forgiven. And they were forgiven their sins and got to go to heaven. So everybody will see God's mercy and they'll see his justice. And everybody will see that it was perfectly just and nobody got condemned that didn't deserve to be condemned. So it's we'll all clear. And also, Things we do live on after us. So we don't always end. Uh, everything we do doesn't end when we die. Like uh, when, William, uh, when William conquered England, and then he died. But they say, okay, all you Normans get out now. William's dead. The conquest is over. No, they stayed on, see, and they still, they still kept running England. The successors did. So it was a change that lived on past him. And change is things we do live on past us. And so we got to yet be rewarded for the good we did that lives after we were alive. So the saints will have many more rewards to get, many more, many more graces and a higher place in heaven to get at the general judgment than they had when they died. Because somebody prayed to you know, St. Francis and he uh, converted some sinner. A thousand years later, he got the grace of conversion. Now, St. Francis won't get rewarded for that yet, so he's got to get greater reward. And uh, some of the damned will get greater punishment because they'll see that they led all these souls into sin. All these souls they scandalized and then the sin, and they're going to go down deeper in hell than they were just after the particular judgment. So, yes. So we'll see that, yes, there's more reward and more punishment has to be done, so we got to find out if we get more reward, or... Dad, you know how you said the ones who didn't know about the Christ but were bad, got to hell, and the ones that knew about the Christ and were baptized but didn't keep the Christ and were bad, went deeper down into hell? Yes. Would the ones who were captured... Um, the ones who got baptized but didn't keep the Christ, would they go deeper, deeper down into hell? Yes, the Catholics are down at the bottom of hell. What about at the general judgment? Would they go deeper down? Some of them will go deeper down, yes, because they'll sign up. Maybe, maybe somebody lost the faith because of them. See, they caused somebody else to be damned. They would have been saved otherwise. So they'll go a lot deeper, yes. Not the trick Christian person was already at the deepest part of hell, and then he at the general judgment. He had to go deeper, and that was all hell could go. Well, hell goes, uh, we don't know how deep it goes. Yes, that's a good question. Well, yes. But uh, the ones at the very bottom are the bishops, Catholic bishops, and the popes. They're at the very bottom. I think it was St. Uh, John of St. Leonard, St. Paul of St. Leonard. Uh, he preached a sermon on hell. Did I tell you that? Yes. No, I told you that. He was, he, he was saying, let's get somebody out of hell and see what it's like. And they dragged somebody out of hell. And they said, who are you? And he says, oh, I'm a Buddhist. And they said, oh, go back to hell. I'm not a Catholic. So he, he pulled out somebody else and said, who are you? And he says, oh, I'm a, a Mohammedan. He says, oh, we don't want you. Go back to hell. And he pulled somebody else out of hell. And he says, who are you? And he says, I'm a pagan. 
we don't want you. He came back down. And he pulled somebody else out of the hill. He said, who are you? And he says, oh, I'm a Mormon. He says, is there too many Catholics down there? And they said, well, to get the Catholics out, you have to turn hell upside down. You can't get them up because they're too far down. You can't drag a Catholic out of hell just like that. You'd have to get some way to go down to the bottom and find one. So he couldn't find the Catholics see, because they were so deep in hell. So uh, that was just part of his sermon. And yes, he was preaching to Catholics, of course. Down, if you go to hell, you're going to be down at the bottom. Yes. Whereas the pagans, they're going to be up at the top because they didn't have much graces. They didn't have much light. They didn't know much. They didn't know the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Whereas some Catholics have denied them. Yes. Uh, so he's going to pronounce a sentence then for everybody. And uh, everybody's going to get their sentence. And everybody's going to hear the sentence. And then... Um, those on the left side, he's going to tell them, Depart from me, you cursed, in the everlasting fire, which was prepared for the devil and his demons. And then what's he going to say to the ones on the right-hand side? Come to heaven, blessed my father. Yes, come you blessed my father. And get the mansions that's prepared for you. Yes, get the place prepared for you in heaven. So, that's a... Uh, the final judgment. And then uh, that's the end. When those people go to heaven for eternity and spend eternity with God, or they go to hell for eternity and they're miserable for eternity. And that's a long time. So you only get a short life of maybe, you know, 80 or 90 or 100 years, 110 years. And then, uh, then you have to spend eternity somewhere. Eternity's forever. You, know, you go to a cemetery, you can see people have been dead for hundreds of years. They've been dead a lot longer than they live. So that's what's going to happen to everybody. We're all going to be dead a lot longer than we live. Angela? Um, if, if, you know how all the devils were cast into hell? You know how the seats were empty? And if all the seats after the general judgment, like the end of time, were not all filled, what would happen to them? Well, they'll all be filled. There'll be enough saints to fill heaven. Yes, heaven will be filled. Our Lord's got the parable of the kingdom. And he's trying to get the uh, people to come to this wedding feast. Remember, he says, you got to go, go, go out to the side of the road and bring people in. And they come in there and say, there's still place. He says, go get some more. Go get some more. Bring them in. Make them come in. I want the, I want the, I want the place filled. So heaven's going to be filled with souls that love God. Spend your eternity loving God and loving each other. It's a great happy place. Great joy. The joy of the children of God. Any questions? All right. You got to remember what these things are. So don't forget what the hypostatic union is. Don't forget what transubstantiation is. There's all these big words that we have to remember. You remember what transubstantiation is? No. Angela. Where the appearance of the bread still stands the same, but the um the flesh and the blood that changes. Yes. One matter changes into another matter, but keeps the appearance of the bread matter. Yes. That's right. Changes the substance. So it's no longer bread. It's now the body, blood. Soul and, Soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's transubstantiation, hypostatic union. The union of two natures and the one person. And the person is the second person of the Holy Trinity, the Word, or the Son. It's called the Son or the Word. But we say uh, at the end of this, we say at the last gospel, the Word was made flesh. Do we have homework, Father? Homework? We've got to memorize questions, but I don't have the questions with me to memorize yet. So hopefully we get started on that next week. All right. But the homework will be to learn what hypostatic union means, learn what transubstantiation means. And uh, yes, learn those two things. All right, let's pray. Oremos. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As well as the beginning, now, and shall be the Lord God. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. So what